Good morning and welcome to the broadcast. We're continuing our series this morning titled The Unknown God. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 17 and we'll begin reading at verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. Verses 22 to 25, may God add a blessing to the hearers of this red word. You recall on last week, we gave you an intro, an introduction to this series. As we find the Apostle Paul in Athens, that's right, and we know that this Greek culture and all was given over to the arts and they had many gods, small g-o-d-s. And we find the Athenians fear they might overlook some deity they did not know about. So they dedicated an altar to the unknown God that if you came by and you was worshiping Buddha, you wouldn't be offended. If you was worshiping uh, Baha, you wouldn't be offended. If you was worshiping Muhammad, well, whatever God you was worshiping, uh, you will feel at home because this particular inscription that was given would be a fit all God. Whatever God you serve or was worshiping, this altar would have suited you. But now Paul, he was offended. So here, if you look at the text, Look at verse 23, where he says, As I was passing, and I found even found an altar with this inscription. But then in the latter part of verse 23, we see that Paul is trying to get them to understand that the one whom you worship without knowing. <laughs> Isn't that sad? You worship without knowing. So guess what? I'm going to proclaim to you the true God. All right? I'm going to introduce you to the true and living God. And in verses 24 to 25, as we shared with you on last week, there are four things 
that Paul gives them to tell the facts for great truths. And we're going to begin today with number one, and that God, he is the creator. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. He is the creator. And let us begin with scripture reference in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. You ever notice when we open our Bible and we go to Genesis and that book means beginning and the very first verse, turn now. Many of you can recite it. You know it by heart. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There it is. That's right. He is the creator. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the Greeks in Acts 17, 24 to 25, they believe different theories about creation. And they even held to a form of evolution. And guess what? We got people today still believe in evolution, that we evolved from something. Some believe we would e evolve from tadpoles. Some said we evolved from apes. You know, someone told me that and I said, well, I, I don't know where you get your facts from because if we evolve from that, then why are there still apes? So they, they, they didn't accept my response. And especially when I told him, I said, well, if that's the case, well, won't you get your brothers out the tree? And they felt a little offended. But no, the scripture tells us in Genesis, and I believe it's verse 27 of chapter 1. And it said, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God is our creator. Oh, yes. Well, don't take my word for it. Paul went on to say that God created everything, and he did not live in temples made by men. In other words, he don't live in those idols. No. You said Buddha out there in the yard. He can't move. He ain't even got enough sense to get out the rain when it start raining. No. He was created by man hands. And all these other idols. Have you paid attention lately to all the idols that are present among us in this year, 2022, there's a lot of idols, all right? So Paul said, God gives life to all. He is the creator. Oh, yes. Well, let's look at another scripture reference. Turn in your Bible to the book of Nehemiah. That's an Old Testament book. And Nehemiah tells us concerning this fact that Paul is trying to get us uh, to understand that forget the unknown God, we serve the true and living God. And guess what? Oh, he's very much real because Nehemiah said, yes, he is the creator because in Nehemiah 9, Verse 6, let's look at it. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it. 
the seas, and all that is in them, and you preserve them all, the host of heaven worships you. Thank you, Brother Nehemiah. Oh, hallelujah. He is the creator. And then, do you recall what he tells us in Psalms 100, verse 3? Let's go to the Psalms. The 100 Psalms, verse 3, make us know concerning our creator and that he is the creator. He said, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Psalmist, for reminding us that he is our creator and he made us. And boy, I love that verse because boy, I had a thought one morning, I said, you know, what if we had power to make people? Boy, some of us, can you imagine, we will make some people in such a mess. Oh, hallelujah, but I'm so glad only the Creator can do these things. Interesting, as Paul was telling these Greeks there in Athens, concerning that God, he is the creator. I love where Deacon Stephen, that's right, one of those deacons that was anointed and full of the Holy Ghost. Did you ever read what he said concerning the creator? Well, turn in your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 7 and look at verse 48 and 50 as Deacon Stephen is letting us have it. He said, however, the most high, that's God y'all, the most high, he does not dwell in temples made with hands as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? Can you imagine who going to build a house for God? <laughs> my Lord, says the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Amen, Deacon Stephen. Our God. The creator has made all these things. And he was quoting from Isaiah and also Psalms 102 verse 25. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I want you to know in the book of Hebrews. Why Hebrews? Because the Hebrew writer and the theme of the book of Hebrews is better than. We have a better high priest. Oh yes, we have someone better than Moses. That's right, talking about Jesus Christ. We got someone better, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Chapter 1 of Hebrews Will you turn there and let's note chapter 1 and we're going to read verse 1 to 3 and get some more scripture references concerning the first truth that Paul brought to these men, talking about the unknown God, to the unknown God. Paul said, uh-uh, he is, that's right. God is the creator. Hebrews chapter 1, 
verse 1. God, you see that? God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, that's Jesus Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. You say what? That's right. He was the creator. He said, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Oh, hallelujah. He made all things. Oh, praise God. I don't know why you doubting. I just don't know why you have to have such a big discussion about he is our creator. But some of you still don't believe. You still will not take what the Apostle Paul is telling us. Well, let's go back then as we want to show you one final scripture reference. And while we're going to the Old Testament, we're going to that great prophet, Isaiah. So turn in your Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. And we want to note in that book, verse 21 to 31. And why I selected this verse is because I want you to write this down. I want you to be able to share with the naysayers. I want you to share with the atheists. I want you to share that one who said, well, I'm, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I want to believe there's a God exists or not. I want you to share with the millenniums and the next gens because those generations, they don't even believe God exists. They don't believe God is real. Well, I, I like the approach that Isaiah brings to the front. Oh, turn your Bibles with me. Uh, uh, turn there and let me read it for you in Isaiah chapter 40. And let us begin at verse 21. And I love the way he start out. He asked the question, have you not known? Mm. Have you not heard? He is not been, has it not been told you? From the beginning? Boy, that's a good question. Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who scratches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Scarcely shall they be planted. Scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall their stock take root in the earth, when he will also blow on them, and they will wither, and the whirlwind will take them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me? This is the Lord talking now. Or to whom shall I be equal? says the Holy One. We're talking about God, the Creator. 
Look at verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their hosts by number? He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Did you catch what Isaiah is saying? And I love those questions he asked. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Oh, praise God. And let us look at a scripture in the New Testament. And that is in the book of Romans. And I love the way Paul make us know concerning the pagan world. And what has happened, how they have forgotten the Creator. Oh, yes. Let's pick it up at verse 18 of chapter 1 in Romans. And we'll close here. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And that's happening today. They suppress the truth. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. Uh-oh. What the scripture is saying here, God has showed Men, that's right, that there is a true creator. Look at verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now what Paul is saying when he wrote to the church in Rome, he let them know in verse 20 that since the creation of the world and it, that his is speaking of God. And yes, he is invisible because he is a spirit. But then... Paul make us understand that although God is a spirit, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. So you may ask the question, where are they seen? Well, then you will go to the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1 to 6, and it's there the Psalms let us know that the attributes of God, 
the things that he made, all creation itself is preaching a message to us that there is a creator. Someone made us and not we ourselves. Oh, have you ever driven, oh, praise God, by the oceans? Have you ever been to Niagara Falls? Have you ever, praise God, saw the sunset in the evening and the beauty, the splendor? Oh, you will begin to say, I know there is a God somewhere, the true and living God. Oh, praise God. So here he said in verse 20, creation itself is preaching a message to us that there is a creator. You ever got up in the early morning and it's quiet and the little bird come by your window and he just singing his little melody, his little song with the tweet, tweet, tweet. And it sounds so sweet, 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 huh? And oh, look like the bird said, I don't know about you, sleepyhead, but I'm up early this morning because I know who created me. I know who made me. Oh, and gave me wings to fly. He is the great creator, God himself. He is our creator. And look at verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So what he's saying, they, they forsook the creator and they began to make idols. Some with images like animals, giving them uh, four feet, huh? And creeping things. Some of them uh, was worshiping snakes that crawl on their belly. But look what verse 24 said. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor, their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature. Look at it. They worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Too many are worshiping the unknown God. It is so sad when we have a true and living God. And truth number one, he is the creator. Yes, he is. He is the creator. Will you come and visit us next week? And we're going to go to the next truth. Praise God. And until then, remember to give thanks.